All right, so in the other video on factoring, I reviewed quite a few methods of factoring, uh, but I left two out because they're different types of factoring that you probably would have learned more recently, and so I wanted to address them specifically. So two different types of factoring. Um, the first one we're going to look at is sum and difference of cubes sum and difference of cubes. So we have two formulas for factoring sum and difference of cubes, and they are very similar, but they look a little different. So the first is for sum of cubes, if you have a to the third plus b to the third. The second formula is for the difference of cubes, which is a to the third minus b to the third. So here is how they are factored. Once you have written, once you've figured out what the number is, so you're going to start with a number like 27, and then you're going to have to say, oh, 27 is actually 3 to the third. Or you might start with 64, and you'll say, oh, 64 is actually 4 to the third. So first you're going to break the number down and see what it is to the third power. And then what you're going to do is you're going to say my first set of parentheses is going to be this um, term right here, same sign, this term right here. So A, same sign, B. A, same sign, B. Next in the formula, you do the first term times itself. So whatever this happens to be, you're going to multiply by itself. And then after that, you're going to do the opposite sign. So for this formula, it would be minus. For this formula, it would be plus. After that, you're going to multiply these two things by each other. So a times b, a times b. And then at the end, we have always positive, And then we have b multiplied by itself. So the formulas are similar but different. The way that we remember the signs here is we say that this sign is the same as the original problem. This sign is the opposite of the original problem. And this sign is always positive. So if you can remember SOAP, you can remember the signs. All right, let's go ahead and do some examples. So example one, and all these examples we're going to factor. That's what the instructions would tell us. So for the first example, we have 27x to the third minus 1. And actually, before we go too much further, I'm going to go ahead and write down some of these perfect cubes for you because I think they're less recognizable than perfect squares. So 1 to the third is 1, 2 to the third is 8, 3 to the third is 27, 4 to the third is 64, 5 to the third is 125, 6 to the third is 216, 7 to the third is 343. I think that's about as big as we can get. Okay, there might be, uh, I'll see, I'll need to look and see, but we might, we might need to go a little bigger than that. Okay, so when we start with this, I have to figure out this has to be something to the third power minus something to the third power. So I know the one is easy, that's one to the third. This, I have the 27, which is three to the third, and I have x to the third, so that's three x raised to the third power. So now I can go ahead and start factoring. I have a little set of parentheses and a big set of parentheses. So in the little set of parentheses, I take these two terms. So this is my a, this is my b. So I'm going to say a equals 3x, b equals 1. And I'm going to do, I'm following the minus, so I'm going to do a minus b. I do the same sign. So a minus b. Then I have a multiplied by itself, so 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Then I have the opposite sign. Then I have a and b multiplied together. And then I've got always positive, and then b multiplied by itself. And so this right here is the factored form. Now this part on the end, you could try to factor, and that would be a slide divide problem. They very rarely factor. In fact, when I tried to find an example where they did factor, I could not find one. <laughs> so it's not impossible. I think I've seen one before, but it's very uncommon for those to actually factor. 
All right, example two. 125 plus 343 m to the third. So I have to rewrite this as something cubed plus something cubed. So 125 is 5 to the third. 343 m to the third is going to be 7 m. 7 m to the third. Okay, so I've got my little parentheses and my big parentheses. I know that my A is 5 and my B is 7m. So my little parentheses, I'm going to follow the plus formula this time, my little parentheses are A plus B, so that's 5 plus 7m. For my big parentheses, I'm going to do A multiplied by itself and then the opposite sign, and then a and b multiplied together, so 5 times 7m is 35m, and then always positive, and then b multiplied by itself, so 49m squared. That m looks dumb. That's going to annoy me. Okay, so next we have another type of factoring, and that is factoring by grouping. And factoring by grouping is what you do when you have four factors. So we've looked at what happens when we have two factors. That's typically GCF or difference of squares. We've looked at what happens, well, and now it can be sum or difference of cubes, because those are two terms as well. We know that when we have trinomials, those are like diamond problems, or they could be slide divide, depending on the number in the front. And now when we have four terms, we're going to factor by grouping. So example three is if we have 7p to the third minus 4p squared minus 56p plus 32. And what we do when we factor by grouping is if the um, expression or the, the polynomial, if it's written in descending order with your variables, so third power, second power, first power, and then none, then we're going to split it right down the middle. So I'm splitting it from the first two terms and the second two terms. So what I'm going to do with the first two terms is I'm going to look for a GCF. Between 7p to the third and 4p squared, I have a GCF of p squared. And then my leftovers would be 7p minus 4. If I look between negative 56 and positive 32, I'm going to go ahead and take out a negative as my GCF. So anytime you have a negative in the front, you're always going to take that out. Um, and both of these are divisible by 8. So I'm going to have negative 8 taken out, and then negative 56 divided by negative 8 is 7p. Positive 32 divided by negative 8 is negative 4. So at this point, we're going to say we took the problem from 1, 2, 3, 4 terms, and it is now one term right here and a second term right there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first term and we're going to look at the second term and we're going to take out the GCF of that. So if you can see it, we have a GCF of the parentheses. That shows up in both of the terms. So 7p minus 4 is the GCF. And then I write my leftovers. So from this one, I have a leftover of p squared. For this one, I have a leftover of negative 8. And so that is the factored form of that polynomial. Example four, we'll go ahead and do that process again. So 30x to the third minus 42x squared minus 5x plus 7. So I'm going to go ahead and split it right down the middle. Between 30 and 42, my GCF would be 6 and then also x squared, and then 30 divided by 6 is 5, and 42 divided by 6 is 7. When I look over here, I can see that they don't really have anything in common, 
So if that happens, you can use one as your GCF. But here I notice that the first one has a negative. So I'm going to go ahead and take out a negative one. And then when I write my leftovers, that would be positive 5x minus 7. So again, I went from four terms to two terms, first term, second term. And between the first term and the second term, I have a GCF of the parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and take those parentheses out. So there's my GCF. I pulled it out. And then my leftovers would be 6x squared and negative 1.